Welcome back to A Year of Final Fantasy and the month of Ramu, and we did it! Of course, whenever you hear the slightly different music, you know it's time for the game of the month. And this month, it's Final Fantasy 3. And there's a wealth of information to talk about here. So, I feel that I can't start this off without talking about the localization nonsense that came with Final Fantasy 3. Much like Final Fantasy 2, we face a similar problem here with Final Fantasy 3. The review isn't about Terra, Celis, Locke, Edgar, and the others fighting against a villainous Kefka to save the world. Though your Super Nintendo cart may say Final Fantasy 3, that is actually Final Fantasy 6. In fact, if you actually search for Final Fantasy 3 on Google, you're going to see that Final Fantasy 3 Super Nintendo cart along with the remade Final Fantasy 3 version that we're going to be talking about today. So that's incredibly confusing. I know they did it to make it not confusing for the United States, but it just really didn't work out in the long run. So that's kind of annoying that I have to keep coming back to this. So the original and proper Final Fantasy 3 was released in Japan on April 27th in 1990. This was at the very end of the NES lifetime as the Super Famicom and Super Nintendo were released later that year in November. Because it was released so late, people were already looking towards these next consoles, and JRPGs take a ton of time to localize, so Square simply just felt it wasn't worth it at the time. Unlike Final Fantasy II, however, it would be more than 15 years before the US got to experience, at least legally, a proper Final Fantasy III release from Square. Even then, it was a remade version for the DS that released in 2006. So, seeing as this is the case, I'm going to be talking about the DS version mostly. However, as I go along, I will mention changes that were made from the original version to the DS version. Much like the other Final Fantasies, Final Fantasy 3 is a completely unique game, but here's the first time that we start seeing what's been established in the preceding games coming to the newer games. While the original Famicom version's main characters were much much like the ones found in Final Fantasy 1, in the DS remake they've been much more fleshed out and given their own names and backstories and they're integrated into the story a little bit more, but it doesn't really change the overall narrative of the game. But let's be honest here, as I've been hinting all month, the real star of this game is the job system. If you've been watching this series, you know that this month we've had three videos dedicated to jobs in Final Fantasy, and this is why. While jobs were in the original Final Fantasy, this game really focuses on the system itself. As you'll discover, each of the four crystals, they're going to bestow upon you jobs that you can freely change throughout this game. This will become a major staple in the series in later games in which jobs are the focus. Unlike Final Fantasy 1's 6 jobs, there are 23 present in this game, almost 4 times the amount of the original. Many of these jobs do recur throughout the series, while some are a little bit more niche that you won't see as often. I do want to point out a few of them other than the six that we've talked about. We have the Dragoon, Ninja, Summoner, Geomancer, Knight, Bard, Dark Knight, and Ranger. Some of the more classic Final Fantasy classes are these that will pop up frequently throughout the series. There are a few other ones that are notable in particular games, such as, let's say, Scholar, which appears in Final Fantasy XIV. Tella, for instance, appears as a sage in Final Fantasy IV. You'll see these other jobs that are in the game will pop up from time to time, but I don't really consider them as a staple of the franchise. Going hand in hand with all of these new jobs, they aren't just simply stat changes. This is the first game where specific job abilities will appear, such as the Dragoon's Jump Commands, Thief Steals Command, and all of those associated with the different jobs. So this is definitely a game that you want to play if you enjoy the job system. The job system was overhauled in some aspects for the DS version, but it largely remains intact, as it was in the original Final Fantasy III for the Famicom. As a little aside, actually, I want to note that the Famicom version of this game was the first in the series to implement an auto-retargeting feature. While fans today couldn't imagine a game that didn't have this system, there was a time whenever you killed an enemy, and then another wanted to attack it, that their attack would just largely be wasted because it would target that already dead creature. 
clearly this is one of the biggest quality of life improvements that was made in these original trilogies of games. As far as the general story goes, especially in the remake version of the DS, it combines the four heroes of light with an actual in-depth story than Final Fantasy 1 had. Our heroes, again in the DS series, are named Luneth, who functions as the main character who's supposed to save the crystals, Ark, who's Luneth's best friend, Refia, who's a daughter of a blacksmith, and Ingus, which is a knight of Sasune. It's a castle or a kingdom in this game, and I have to say as an aside, that kingdom employs red mages. All of the knights use magic and fighting together, so shout out to the red mages out there. That being said though, the version of Final Fantasy 3 on the Famicom follows more closely with Final Fantasy 1, which is that the four main characters have no real proper names. Overall, this game, story-wise, just feels like a reimagining of the original Final Fantasy with a much deeper story and a much more complex job system with the mechanics that they've introduced. Also here, you'll see many of the well-known characters start to be reintroduced that appeared in Final Fantasy 2 such as Sid, Princess Sarah, which was kind of introduced in Final Fantasy 1, is also here. So you see they're reusing and recycling these traditional Final Fantasy elements that we've come to know and love. But as I said, it is just your classic four elemental crystal Final Fantasy story. So to wrap up the aspects about these games, I feel that I must mention the soundtrack. As we know, Nobuo Uematsu scored this game. This was actually his 21st gaming score, which is just incredibly impressive considered that this was made in, what, 1989, when the industry was incredibly young, so props to him. As time will tell, his music only gets better, and this game actually features one of my favorite Final Fantasy themes, and it's one that you've been hearing this entire month. As far as releases go, we've been talking about the DS remake, but before I go into the re-releases of that, I do feel that it's incredibly important to mention one thing. This Final Fantasy game evaded Western release for such a long time. Final Fantasy fans are a passionate bunch, and the people that are passionate want to experience the franchise as a whole, and the Final Fantasy fans were no different. So in the mid-90s, as emulators and ROMs were on the rise, a passionate group of Final Fantasy fans got together and released an English patch for the original Famicom game. As of now, that's the only way to play this game as it originally was, except in English. There actually exist reproduction cartridges flashed with this ROM, so you can get the original experience as it would have been intended had this game actually been released in the States. So I feel it's important to mention this and to thank the community for preserving this piece of Final Fantasy history. With that out of the way, let's focus on the DS remake. And the remake is very much that. The game has been just completely remade. It's not a remaster here at all. Square collaborated with a company called Matrix Software, not that Matrix, and they created Final Fantasy III using an original 3D game engine, which would actually be used for some future games as well. We've actually already talked about a little bit with Final Fantasy The Four Heroes of Light. There's a few other games though that use it as well. Along with this remake, a fantastic CGI opening was added, and this particular version of the game, like many of the remakes and remasters, had been ported to other platforms and systems. IOS and Android had some pretty good ports of the DS remake with sharper graphics and sounds, and with a few new enhancements. PSP actually got a port of this game very late in its life in 2012, which I actually didn't discover until maybe a year ago when I was messing around with my PSP. That's really awesome, but I really wish they would have made this a little bit more impactful for the PSP. Other ports of note, you have the Kindle Fire and the Ouya, and basically the big thing that you want to note where it came out on is that it is available on Steam. So whichever way you play it, you're going to have a fantastic game waiting for you. Out of the original trilogy, I do believe that this is the best Final Fantasy experience that you're going to have. It's definitely worth a playthrough, if not just for the fantastic introduction to the origin of the job system. So here, as we look back on the month of Ramu, I've learned so much about many games that I never got the opportunity to play 
or that I played just such a long time ago, I got a reason to revisit them again. And this was fantastic. This month was awesome. And we get to end it off with the incredibly important installment of Final Fantasy 3. Final Fantasy 3 is the first that begins the tradition of what we know Final Fantasy as today. We look back to the past and we take those elements of the franchise that people love the most and we recreate an entirely new yet familiar game. The merging of the familiar and new is what allows series like Final Fantasy to last 30 plus years. So as we look forward to April, the month of Leviathan, we send off the month of Ramu in style in only the way that Final Fantasy 3 can. Thank you for the adventure of a lifetime.